Hello! Hello, everybody! It's us, we're here, Robin's here at last. Oh, sorry about that, just crazy <laughs> stuff, really. Just stuff, <laughs> just crazy stuff, that's the world that we live in today. Yeah, just just the most insane day of doing really very little and just nothing going on time at all, and just being everywhere at once, just... and then... Uh, my kids seem to be going to bed later and later and later, and my son's taken up League of Legends, uh, which he loves, but plays all the time on the PC, which is right here. So he was like, okay, you need to get off by half past nine, 29 minutes past nine. <laughs> <laughs> but you said half past, so he like, he got off an hour a minute early. You need to get him off at nine, then he's got like 20 more minutes to yeah, I, take I his time. No, but I, I did tell that to him at nine, nine o'clock, so don't forget I'm doing that at half past nine, so you need to get off by then. Yeah, and true. of course... I was talking to my wife. We had like 15 minutes passing to actually talk to one another. Oh dear. Hello, still alive, yes. Yeah, basically, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's been that crazy sort of day. Uh, Jacob, we've already got a question. Jacob says that will this be live on YouTube tomorrow? Well, it won't be live on YouTube, but it will be on YouTube tomorrow because uh, his younger is Ill, his youngster is ill. So, I hope they're feeling okay. But if we you do have to here. leave. Jacob, you're the winner of the paintbrushes, aren't you? Did they arrive? I oh, sent yeah. them last week. This time last week, I think I sent them. The, the paint, the paint, uh, paint, paint mat. Paint, not paintbrushes, paint. Um, palette. Well, you know, you know what it is. <laughs> the that ma- uh, palette. The palette. Yes. You won one of them, I think. Did it arrive? Basically, is what he's trying to ask. Are you even yeah. still there after that one? <laughs> <laughs> Dave Henson says he yeah. might not be around for long because his wife is unwell. still waiting. Oh, no. I shall chase it. I'll follow that up. I think, I think it was a reasonably... Long delay because I'm a cheapskate. Uh, but I will, um, I will, I'll chase it up. Uh, David Henson says that he might not be along very for very long because his wife's unwell too. So I hope she's feeling better soon as well. And Good you can always catch well, up. I hope tomorrow. nobody's got anything too horrible as well. Obviously, being unwell was, used to be fairly innocent. Yeah, these days you're like, oh God, oh God, are they unwell. You're like, no, 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 I've just got the shits, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. BJ says that a taser works well getting unwanted persons off your PC. Yeah, I don't know if that would work with children. I, I don't know. They, I think they become immune. Aren't they? they turn sort of a bit Jason's feral. wife is unwell too. Goodness everyone's, me. Ch- everyone's wives and children aren't doing very well. This is not good. No. BJ's, BJ's got nothing. nothing to do. You're not going for a run or something? He's been <laughs> for his run. He would have been, oh, wasn't he? he? Goodness me. Goodness me. <laughs> Megan loves his wife. is also unwell. Oh, it's it's an epidemic. It is. Ros has got the right idea. Doesn't have any. It's the best way of doing it, frankly. Just less hassle. I've yeah. hit myself off the top. Trying to get my balance of my head in the screen here. Sorry. But yes, Jacob, in case it wasn't clear, the video will be available to watch tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, VJ went for his run for three hours ago. I don't know how you do that. I, I, I've taken up exercise to a degree this year, but I could not get up at 5.30 and do it. No, I, I can't get up at 5.30 anyway. Let alone for that. No, no. And Jason says that they've had the COVID test person turn up. Well, hopefully it is okay. just a cold, like you say, it is Jason. And fingers crossed that she's doing okay. Yeah. I, I I did actually lie that I said I couldn't do it. And I did for several years. I used to get up three times a week. I used to get up at 5 a.m. Yeah. And then I would go to the gym with a friend of mine. Um, and we would do an hour in the gym before I'd go to work or come back and get the train to work and stuff. And I was just thinking of you saying, he's not my friend anymore. That was <laughs> yeah. the only way I could stop going. Yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, luckily, you know, the pandemic struck, so we couldn't go. <laughs> it, it did turn to one of those things where it just became like almost a game of chicken of who would who would drop out first. Because the minute one person dropped out, the other person would be like, I'm not going then. Just, I, I, I'm not, not doing it. I remember because you used to play. Used to go sometimes after we played when we, when the channel first started. Yeah. So we'd be like play till when we were doing stupid AOS games and things. And we play till half past twelve, one o'clock in the morning. You'd be like, I'm getting up for the gym at five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, you were just a mere thirty-five years old at the time. I was, or something. A, I was a snip of a lad um... <laughs> then. A slip of a lad then. Of well, course. Who wants those big games when you can play? Low mini count games. Oh, beautiful segue. How do you like that? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Right, we're off. Thank good you. Good night, OS fans. Thank you, and good night. <laughs> it's not going to get any better than that. <laughs> that's about as that's about as um as streamlined as I, I can be really. Despite going to the gym at five thirty in the morning, you can't yeah, be any more. It's done that. Fuck all is all I can say. Gyms are a lie. <laughs>
but there we go so yeah that is our topic for this evening is low model count games the goods the bad the uglies the what we like what we don't like what's good about them, what's bad about them we need your comments we need your comments in that chat channel to give us stuff to talk about because <laughs> <laughs> we've got nothing yeah. well, we did get a load somebody sent us a load on the disc patreon discord didn't we load of games yes yes very cool yeah. that we're not actually sent us a load of games but put a load of links to games so most of which i hadn't heard of but wildlands is in there which is one of my favorite small modern point count games which one was um, that sorry wildlands oh yeah we have played that on the channel haven't we i'd like to play that quite a lot to 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 to, to see how it evolves when you ever played like one-off games yeah um, that's probably i think that's because we always try to get the whole underworlds in on four night four not four nights a week that'd be that'd be amazing yeah, yeah. um yeah. we were trying to get that in four times a month but now we're mm. sort of starting to bring other stuff in that we, we can maybe afford like blitz bowl and stuff like that. we can afford to maybe try and get a few different games in of that kind of stuff i'm not sure how um how, how viewable wildlands is though that's the thing and that's the problem with any any games we're going to play on the channel it's whether they people will watch them which is a wholly different discussion to what, what makes a good game yes that's um, true because obviously lots of people watch four hundred forty thousand games and we all know how i think feel about that um <laughs> you love them <laughs> you love them <laughs> That, that is true. A, a game, a good game to play is not necessarily a good game to watch. Um, so it's always getting that, that balance. Um, Blitz Bowl, yeah. Rosa has mentioned he like, enjoyed the Blitz Bowl game. I enjoyed the Blitz Bowl game. And I think you, you enjoyed the Blitz Bowl game in the end as well. Well, I have to say, because we're playing tomorrow, and, I, and it's our last game. We've we managed to squeeze one in the last game before we locked down for four weeks. And that was a physical game anyway. And I was almost at the point of saying to Pete, should we not play? Underworlds, we just have a game of Blitz Bowl. <laughs> Probably fit. I really, really enjoyed that. You probably fit a couple of games then, couldn't you? I'm finding Blitz Bowl just a little bit, like, not Blitz Bowl, uh, mm. Underworlds, a little bit like I'm treading water at the moment. Um, so, Super Fantasy Brawl, I do, again, it's one of those things, I, people are talking about it in the comments, I do think about playing, but we haven't got a copy, so that can make it difficult. Yeah, because uh, they did the Kickstarter a while ago, didn't they? So anything, that we, if we were going to do that now, we'd have to, yeah. Yeah, tricky. I mean, Mythic Games did actually. Is it Mythic Games? Uh, uh, they did actually send me an email about something else, and I needed replied. Said, "Oh, be interested in uh, playing like Super, Super Fantasy Brawl." But um, yeah. it kind of it looks good from the point of view in that it's got that same thing going for the Underworld does. Uh, very low model count. You only ever have three models. Um, no deck building at all. You just get the cards that are relevant to your fighter, and then that's it. So it, yeah, it, it does look. And it's almost a blend of Blitz Bowl and Underworld because yes. it has the rolling. It has the rolling objectives as well. That is a good point. That is a very good point. Um, so that is very interesting, and I do like that aspect of it. And the models look quite cool as well, and they're much bigger, chunkier models yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I keep flip flopping on whether that one will be worth trying or not. It's just it's fitting it in, isn't it? That's the problem because all these games we could try. But then uh, to mix it, is, uh, is it better as a channel? We sort of have to do things, think things on the channel. Is it better to be play play one different game every few weeks, or, or have sort of three regular games that we play alternately? If you see what yeah. I mean, or you'll just keep because obviously we'll keep playing Underworld, so that's a given. Yeah. And we're going to stick with Necromunda for a while because we've invested some time and effort in that. And then do we find a third game that we stick to, or do we just chop and change every week? And I don't really know what the right answer is. Um, yeah. I think probably. We do whatever is fun. It's probably better. I, th I think so. I mean, we've stuck with Underworlds religiously for the best part of two years now, and I, I mean, it's helped us. It's built up an amazing Patreon uh, following for for you know what we've done. I have noticed though, a lot of other channels have covered a lot more different things and are all doing better than us. Whether that's related or not, or whether it's just because we're shit, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So, what you mean by better? I think I think I know you're always following those YouTube metrics. Yeah, it's uh, a bit of that. It's a bit of that. Yeah. Um, I mean, Blackjack Legacy, he's got more of everything. He's got more Patreons, more YouTubers, more more all that kind of stuff. At some other channels, they've got more YouTubers, but they don't have the Patreon group that we've got, which is yeah. fantastic. And I think, yeah, it would, it would definitely be more a case of what our Patreoners wanted to see overall. Yes, I think so. Yeah. 
I'd like to spine that game that, that brings in a whole new slew of people to the amazing Agents of Sigmar experience. Um, and that's kind of what tonight's about a little bit because I think we probably aren't going to be playing any large model kite games. Somebody did ask what makes a small model count game uh, up there. I don't really know. I think probably anything more than 10 aside probably is not a small miniatures game. Is that a reasonable, Pete, would you say? Yes, somewhere around that. It's, it's weird because you could possibly play Necromunda with maybe a dozen models each. Yeah, but you could oh, also play, you could yeah. also play Necromunda with six models each and still take two yeah, hours yeah. over it. But that's just us, I think. No way. Yeah, Laura's in There's tonight. Hello, Laura. Uh, she Hello, Laura. Some games benefit from multiple plays. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Necromunda is totally more fun as a as a campaign. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And we're looking at hoping to get bring Bard Sung when that comes out to the channel, and that obviously is is a campaigny type thing, and that will requ require repeated plays but when we played Blackstone Fortress we didn't really get that much interest but I think maybe we just didn't time that very well yeah I definitely think that maybe timing's got something to do with it but how much more popular is Blackstone going to be now considering they've stopped selling it yeah true VJ says that Black Jack has been uh, building his community support but he spends a lot less time he spends less time on Discord than you though Pete that is true if you Go and join our Patreon and go on the Discord. You basically get 24-hour unfettered access to Pete's stream of consciousness. <laughs> Which is... Like stepping into a river of Pete. Uh, uh, that's just a uh, great big pile it's of Pete so landing. shallow, you don't even get your feet wet. Oh. Um, <laughs> harsh. That's harsh. Sorry, um, I just... I don't, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Matt, it was just... That was... That was that was just horrible. Are you trying to get them in before Rosa does tonight? Is that it? Yeah, that's it. I'm just going to get the sick burns in before Rosa. Before Rosa has time to tighten out. He can't burn us if we burn ourselves horribly first. I did exactly. completely mangle the word discipline when I tried to type that out. I apologise for that. <laughs> dis dis I don't know what I typed. <laughs> it's then. Dis a very dis old. It'll be alright in the night. Sketch with a a, a guy talking about discipline. <laughs> So he writes disc plying on the on the board and says, "This is what's lacking." I can't remember the whole thing, but this is what's lacking. This is what the youth of today need, kind of thing. And it says disc plying on the disc plying. on the blackboard. People need disc plying. <laughs> um, yeah. So VJ says Andy's focused on building his community, which is why he has such good Patreon support. What is building a community? What is defined as building a community? That's that's something for a different article, anyway. That's a different night's yeah. discussion. I think that one is. But I am I am bemused by that is because it's not just tweeting stuff and showing pictures of new games and reviewing new games what is building a community but that's that's a different week maybe that's another week we can get everybody we can, on to we help can us brainstorm everybody's ideas yeah pretty much <laughs> pretty much yeah anything that helps get us um um we could talk about it on a live stream. It's not a bad idea, VJ. VJ did mention further up, Robin, whilst you were sorting your technical issues, that VJ had, uh, or should I say, Morph had spoken to Andy, and Andy was up for a, a chat online at some point. So, yeah, we should perhaps do that. That's a good idea. Yeah, Andy, tell us how you built your community to be bigger than now, <laughs> so that we can copy it <laughs> and then thrash you. No, no, we we'll want to thrash Andy. Bloke. The problem, I, the most annoying thing is that so much of the UK community, the YouTube UK community, is just all over the place. No one's in the southeast. No one's nearby. No one's like 20 minutes drive away or anything like that. Everyone's like three mile, three hours up the country or something. John's not very far away. Yeah, painting. No, painting good. No, John, painting who's good. online tonight. John is John is not. Oh, is he? Um, I haven't seen him. Today. He was yeah, here okay. commenting from way, way back up. A bit, but, uh, okay. Way back yes, when. But I mean more the YouTube community as well i am hoping oh, I once, see, I once, see, you, see. once the lockdown um, yeah. is gone we can get more people on the channel i think the, nice. the garage is maybe a little bit more habitable now maybe maybe it's got, I'm, a, proper, I'm, it's got a proper table I'm still stuff. working on mrs brooks to um let me have a big office in the back garden which we can put in like heating and stuff <laughs> that would just be absolutely fantastic yeah, I've convinced her that we can put it behind the big bunch of trees we've got on the right hand side of the garden, so you won't be able to see it particularly. And then and we could just have it down there. We'll, we'll see. But we do like the garage. I will miss the garage. I might just have to make it all dusty and full of cobwebs anyway. Just, just... <laughs> just come around the week after it's been installed. There's just there's no windows. There's snow on the floor. <laughs> what have you done, Robin? I didn't like it before. It's too warm. Too cosy. Uh, to be honest, the garage, uh, it's got a certain charm, which I quite like. It would be better if it would be just better if it wasn't bloody freezing. I think it's gonna it's gonna approach zero tomorrow night. Oh so uh, it's, it's definitely freeze one for the, to death. 
the warm trues tomorrow. I'm, I'm definitely struggling to work out how to get the infrared heater to work because it doesn't seem to work very well. I mean, you can no. feel it when you get near it, throwing out a ton of heat, but it doesn't yeah. seem to make you feel toasty warm. No. So next so. week's um, live chat will be how to make a infrared heater work. Yes. <laughs> I think we've got it too close to the table. We need to move it further away. But also it needs to be higher up so that it will hit both above and below the table. But yes. Uh, but that's a whole other discussion. Again, Loz says that it wasn't too cold when, when they came along. It was back in, f was it February or March? I think it was March. March oh, was just before lockdown. Wasn't and it was it? when we had quite a, a, yeah. an unseasonably warm patch, I think. I remember standing outside at one point just chatting. And also, I think an extra two bodies in the garage probably makes it warmer. Yeah, that's true. It's true. Yeah, as long as the body's alive. Obviously, I've tried it with dead bodies. And it just doesn't make it. it doesn't warm it out at all. <laughs> just makes it a bit more smelly. Cuddle for extra body heat. Well, we do offer that, but no one takes us up on it. People would pay for that. <laughs> I'm not sure they would. <laughs> so let's 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 get back onto what was what is a yes, low model sorry. count game. So let's start with the definition. What is a low model count game? And I well, think... somebody mentioned Milo has mentioned that Warcry counts as a small model count game. I, I think that's probably accurate. You don't get more yeah. than maybe a dozen or so models in that. Yeah, if you're storm so, maybe about four, but I don't think any bigger than that. No bigger really. than four. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> no, no bigger than to what twelve, fifteen at the most, as Milo says. Yeah, I think I think that's true because once you get to a certain point, like Blood Bowl is a small model count game, but they can take ages to play Blood Bowl games. Um, yes. I'm going to have to go and turn my washing machine off because I thought it's going to drive me insane. Robin's going to go sort his washing machine out, so I'm going to talk about everybody send Robin anonymously letters to convince his wife to, to let him spend some money on a garage in the garden, which will be all double glazed and stuff. Um, just because. Uh, VJ says that Blood Bowl sucks. Oh, I still like it, but I do. I have found I've got to an age where longer games I haven't got the time for them anymore and I haven't got the brain power for that anymore and I haven't got the patience for them anymore no I would no, love I... to play AOS and 40k and and all those kind of games and have these massive armies arrayed out on the boards but I can't be asked. <laughs> Now, Rosa says he used to work in a garage about 7.30 in the morning. Not cold to me. He's worked with icicles coming from the ceiling. I totally hear you, Rosa. All I'm going to say is you're 30 years younger than me, nearly. Come back in 30 years' time and tell me whether it's cold in the garage at 7.30 in the morning. Yeah. Because <laughs> I never used to get cold either. And now, it's like, oh, it's got a bit dark in October. It's like, oh, bloody hell, it's freezing. And now you're like... Is the radiator on whilst you sort of your hand sizzles as you put yeah. it on the radiator? I don't think this radiator's on, you know. I don't think it's on. What's that cooking smell? Oh, it's my hand. My wife wants a shout out. She says if you tell her to play Underworld, she will. <laughs> Mrs. David well, yeah. Henderson. Mrs. H Mrs. Henderson. Here you are, Mrs. Henderson. <laughs> Mrs. Henderson, play Underworlds. Play Underworlds. You, you will love it. Anyway, so... Yeah. It. There we go. That's the chat. Any more? <laughs> Any more shouts? Let us know. Yeah. More fast. Did we talk about there's myth and goal last week? Fast now. There's some. There's some uh, hate for Blood Bowl. What's myth and VJ? goal? It's funny how you can have so much love for one game and so much dislike for the other. Which is one <laughs> based almost exactly off of the other. But then at the same time, you know, you hate 40k, but you would love an Underworld's version of 40k. Tomato potato. Sorry, that was miles away. There, I was, I was reading the comments. Did you ask me a question? No. Oh, <laughs> BJ says, "Did we talk about Myth and Goal last week? What was Myth and Goal? I don't remember." Myth don't and Goal, we so. did. It's the new, it's the James Hewitt um, related. Uh, is it James Hewitt? Um, I can never remember. It's James. I don't think it, I feel like it's not James now. Anyway, he used to. Be, he, he's the guy, the Blitz Bowl designer, and he's doing a Myth and Goal kind of mythological related game, Blitz Bowl type oh, game. Oh yes, we did. Yeah. Ooh, no proprietary miniatures. It is James. Yeah. It's James, sorry. I did quite like the idea of that because the, the, the Kickstarter doesn't have any models to start with, so you can just use yeah. your own. So. so a small model count or a low model count game is something that's probably around somewhere in the region of anything from f two or three to a dozen or so models. That's our definition yeah. of a small model, model I count I think game. so. I think so. We're getting some good suggestions here. 
I know Rosa wants us to keep playing Marvel Champions. He said that way out the chat. So, but we are going to keep doing that. I'm going to, I haven't played this week, but we've got a, on YouTube, we've got a, a double header coming out this week. And then I'll get back in the garage and record some solo games. Um, and then the actual, that, that's a very small model count because we haven't got any models. Um, <laughs> but, so, yeah, Myth and Gold, definitely interested in. And then was something else. Where's it gone? Stupid chat. Oh, whole, Dead Hat says Journeys in Middle Earth is a fantastic game. We actually had a big discussion about, well, not a big discussion, but a small discussion about Journeys in Middle Earth yesterday because I've got it and I've played it and enjoyed it. And I'm thinking maybe it's my small lockdown project. Not that I, my life is actually going to get any less busy over lockdown, but it's to paint the uh, Journeys in Middle Earth model. So I could do, at the very least, a solo game, but we can maybe check out some games of that because it's quite neat. It's quite yeah. a neat game. So yeah, definitely up for some Journeys in Middle Earth. I've, I've to uh, to compliment your your situation. I likewise probably won't be any less busy during lockdown. Um, but I've bought ordered a couple of blitz bowl teams uh, to get painted and put together. Well, put together and painted. So because at the minute I'm just spending an odd amount of time on me balls. Uh, just spending a lot of time on them at the minute because I haven't got any other models to paint. So my balls are getting a lot of attention. <laughs> So, um, yeah. I just don't want to say to that, really. No, there's nothing to say to that. Are they but oddly shaped? Some of them are a bit oddly shaped and have um, em- emanations coming from them. So, um, yes. That's that's not good. That's not good. But so. Uh, Sorry to segue into your comment here, Laura. But um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, she thinks to an extent lower count model games live or die on their rule set. With bigger, well, bigger games can get away with looser rules because the spectre of the game is a bigger part of the attraction. You know what? I've never quite thought of it like that, but I think you're absolutely right. And this kind of ties into my controversial statement last week or the week before that 40k, 40K. people in. No, I didn't say everybody hated it. I just said, but nobody particularly enjoys actually playing it. I know that is obviously was an exaggeration, but it's it isn't. I don't think the main attraction of that game. I think the main attraction is that well, the spectacle of the game, as Laura puts it. Yeah. Um, I mean, it I does think, look fantastic when it's all arrayed on the board. Yeah, and the law feeds into much more, and the, and the reason for the units and things like that. It's much more of a, it's much more of an endeavour. Whereas actually, I mean, London was a classic example. You, it's pr- the law and everything else behind the game is pretty much fire and forget. I mean, the models are beautiful, but it's you don't need to know it or worry about it at all, and it's just the same each week, and there's no. I mean, the cards are different, obviously, but um, it's um, it's just a different thing. And it does live. If, if the rule set was crap, we wouldn't play it. Yeah, that is true. That is true. And Jason sort of adds to it a bit where he said people part with 40k to justify the investment. And I, I wonder if there is a bit of that that people sort of get to a point where they spend hundreds of pounds on this army and then they start playing it and they think, oh, it's a bit shit. I don't really. Uh, it's a bit dull, but I've spent all this money. I've got to keep going now. Whereas Underworld, you could buy. Beast Grave and a couple of war bands, you know, you're, you're 70, 70, 80 quid in the hole, maybe, and then you just sort of go, actually, fuck it, I can't be bothered, and just, you know, don't bother, don't worry about it anymore. Yeah, yeah it's much easier that way. I'll go along with that. Got something about Crisis Protocol, another small mod account I have to get into. Um, I did, did occur to me that my lockdown project should have been painting the Crisis Protocol, when it's just, it, maybe, maybe I'll do both. <laughs> Why not? I mean, One also. Yeah, also, I mean, some Adeptus Titanicus maybe, and, you know, just, just chuck all those models on the list. Cause, cause yeah, you see, I'm not... It's a I'm fantasy not list. <laughs> I, 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 know, I know that um, uh, Underworld obviously is a GW game, but I don't find GW games particularly inspiring in their rules. And so going back to Laura's comment about them living and dying by their rules, I don't know that I, the rules of those games would be good enough to make me want to play them. They're quite dead set, aren't they? Um, they haven't changed things like 40k. They've brought out different editions, and yeah, eighth edition changed some aspects of the rules, but it's still pretty much a, a I go, you go system. And no, sorry, a we go system. I always get those mixed up. It's still a we go system. It still works off of the same basic concepts of strength and toughness and all this kind of stuff. AOS they threw it all out the window and started again with, and half did it right. I yeah. feel, but they they didn't quite get it. It was almost like they were like, we've got to change it up massively, but not too massively, just in case. So, they do seem to do very similar things, and and but they've said in the past that they're a model company and not a game company. So, yeah, although well, that was under the old management, wasn't it? I yeah, don't I don't know how much they, they still. But they still make models, don't they? Laura still loves to play iOS. 
Yeah, I mean, I think we pro- I possibly would enjoy iOS if I could get out of the well, I haven't got enough models, and B, I don't know, I can't get into the different modifiers and all that. It just drives me potty. Yeah, the other <laughs> problem we as a channel would have with iOS is no one wants to see the same army week after week no, after week that, after week. No, no, we haven't got the resources. Yeah. Uh, um, Another but... good thing about low model count games is not always, there are many exceptions, but quite often they don't tend to have very much in the way of scenery, not tons no. of it. Um, but yeah. when they do, they tend to be more immersive. So... We do like our hex based games. We have actually just got copies of Battletech to try out. Battletech! Some of the, uh, I had a look at the models, I had a quick look at the quick start rules. It's still pretty old school, but it might be good fun to do where we are going to do a couple of games on the channel. Um, see how much fun that is. Uh, but we'll see. See you later, oh, David. I have, I have, I have my reservations about it because it, it looks quite chunky. But, um, David's got to yeah. head off, but stay safe, dude. Catch up with the rest of it tomorrow. Who's heading off? Sorry, I missed that. Uh, David Henderson. Oh, who's bye, David. David. So hopefully, Miss Henderson's just saying to him, Come on, let's get a game in. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like she was ill. Maybe that's why she said it. <laughs> Fine, I'll play the stupid game now. Fuck off. VJ said he'd love to see some Battletech Alpha Strike. I think we're getting the Alpha Strike rule. We've only got the starter boxes at the moment. I don't think, I, but I'm apparently getting another parcel, so we'll see. OB says he used to play that at high so, school. Bloody heck. Yeah, I'd say it's been around a long time. Now, uh, there was a comment about from Damien about Judgment. I have not, I've never heard of Judgment. An Australian company skirmish MOBA type game. Miniature wise, it's three versus five or four or five, six, five, five, and they're moving to a hex type grid. Ooh, hexes, you say? Yeah, so it's Pete's suddenly interested. <laughs> hexes, not nipples. Oh, well, um, potato, tomato. Is that how you put a hex on people? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I, I've not heard, I don't know anything about it at all, but it, I, I'm not disinterested, certainly. There's so many little games. Who was it? Somebody was saying they were had a job or an interview with War Cradle, and they've got like a small skirmish Rome game, I think. Gangs of Rome, I think that's them. And again, there's just so many of these little games. There's Burrows and, Burrows and Badgers we've talked about we've talked about before. That one didn't uh-huh. excite me quite so much. Because no, I know, like... but just, just the sheer volume of small... Oh, yeah. Models. Yes, yeah, there's a yeah. absolutely massive yeah. game. I, I wonder if it's because there's a lot of people who are our generation who grew up with Warhammer and 40K and all that kind of stuff and have got to that age in their life where they're like, I haven't got time to play fucking 40K, but I would like to play a game that I can play on a coffee table and takes me an hour to play, not an entire evening because I've got the kids and the wife and yeah. the job and all the rest of it. And I wonder if there's more of that coming out there because there's a prevalence of, a bit like the prevalence of like um, um, superhero films and stuff because the people who read the superhero comics are now film directors and actors and stuff. So so they sat there and went, let's do a yeah. film about, super, uh, you know, X-Men or something like that. Obviously Superman was years and years and years ago, the originals of that, but that was kind of almost like... Um, uh, the exception. There weren't very many superhero films around, but then now it's mainstream. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry, I've, I've no, no beef. It's just given said, and there's, um, there's so many other replies to this are firing off in my head. There's there's a big infinity scene in Norwich. I like the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Is it so big you can't see the end of it? <laughs> um. I've never played Infinity, and it, it looks great, but I, I, you know, it's it, I, I've not played it. I don't think I'd ever would, but it looks nice. Um, Laura's played Frostgrave. I would love in an alternate universe. Pete and I are the Frostgrave, Frostgrave content providing kings. I would love to have got more into that and, and, and enjoyed it, but I just didn't didn't quite tick the boxes, and we didn't quite get into it, did we? I feel I feel uh, Guerrilla Games might beat us on that one. They do quite a lot of Frostgrave content. He does. Who's rather. that? Um, Gorilla yeah. Games. Ash over on Gorilla Games. Yeah, but we know it, boy. You know what I mean. Yeah. The kings of the kings of the suboptimal decision making. Oh content. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah, but, you know, I, I, but we never, we never, we never. There are like all these things we start and then we never get into the path of Underworld. Yeah. Um, I just, I enjoyed. Um, I did quite I like that, and I felt like it had a lot of potential for interesting kind of storytelling and and. Ironically, as well, you you could actually use a lot of the Underworld models in that. You, you could, yeah. match them all together and it wouldn't matter. No, I think we played that before we Underworld did. was really a thing for us. We did. We had a load of um, AOS models and we played that because yeah. uh, I remember playing I think we only played two games of it and I d- definitely remember 
one game was at my house when we were just practicing it to try it out to see if we liked it or not. And right. the second game was at your house that we recorded. Um, mm. And that that was that was yeah that was a good game and it's very low model count. The only problem I had with it in retrospect now is that it had rulers, but we still play right. you know neck yeah. under so. Ash gets more raw, got rules wrong than you guys, that's for sure. Wow. I will <laughs> say, I mean, I know um, Mini Wargame get a lot of flack for, for getting rules wrong, but there's a lot of different fucking games and a lot of different rules. I mean, just, I'm, I'm not going to judge anyone anymore on getting rules wrong. No, because you can get rules wrong in the in the heat at the moment. I mean, you can get, them wrong, really, think. get the same rule wrong in different ways or you can get it right and then get it wrong five minutes later or yep. you can even say what the right rule is and then play it wrong yeah we've done all those we've done all of those all things. of them we've got <laughs> we've got the bingo card of fucking up rules um and and we've even had situations where we've read the rule we've discussed yeah. the rule we've decided what the rule is and then done something else completely or just forgotten yeah <laughs> just moved on to something different yeah yeah <laughs> Or just start having a conversation oh, about the heater. Right, so you take damage. Oh yeah, so that means he's dead. Oh, then we don't take the model off. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. Carry on. <laughs> that kind of thing. We've done all of that before. Um, yeah, I quite like Frostgrave. And Laura, you've got quite a few Underworlds and AOS models, so you'd have plenty of stuff to be able to play Frostgrave with. Um, Frostgrave falls into that low model count, high terrain sort of setting. I feel it's it low does, models. It does need. It does need a lot of terrain. Yeah, to to make it really yeah. feel. Right, and I think Necromunda possibly falls into that category as well. If yeah. you want to play it properly, properly, definitely. Um, yeah. So I guess you've got kind of two categories of, of small model count. You've got like small model count with with lashings of terrain to make it sort of thematic, and then you've got small model count board games or, or board yeah. based games, hex based games, that kind of thing. Yeah, Which I don't know Red battle things like that. Red Spain's given a, another thumbs up for Super Fantasy Brawl. He, he, he likes that one. That, so that has the advantage there's no scenery. That has no scenery. Uh, I mean, you can, yeah. you can I think, buy, because they've got like three statues, and they, each statue has a zone near it or something, but the statues themselves, I think you can buy the statues if you wanted to, which would look quite funky. Yeah. Yeah. Laura says she's painted up a, a Necromunda table. Awesome. It's fine in the time I do, to paint I do the want to, I, well, we might be getting some scenery for Necromunda, but I, I, yeah, I'm really, really enjoying our games with that, and I think that's because I don't know it very well, so I'm not taking it too seriously. Um, and I think that's, I think that might be my problem with Underworlds at the moment. I think I've talked about that before. I think I'm just not, I've forgotten how to f how, how how to have fun with it, and I almost need to kind of go back to first principles and just. Is that? Uh, I yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how to do that though, because as soon as you start building a deck, you start to think, well, that's, that's not optimal. Work. Yeah, yeah, I oh, and if you and and I think the game maybe the nature of the game at the moment is if you do pick a suboptimal deck, which I'm very good at, it doesn't it doesn't work, and then you have a frustrating play experience. Yeah, um, I think if you're still getting through the cards but not scoring very much, that's all right. But if you are basically just the whole thing's bricking and nothing's working, then it's, it isn't any fun. Um, yeah, and I think that uh, when when it was just Shade Spire, or possibly even when it was the early days of Night Vault, there wasn't masses of talk of, you know, optimal builds, and it was it was a simpler time. There there, were, there wasn't the same level of of like what is the optimum opponent crushing set of cards, and these days it kind of feels like we have to do that. To, to remain yeah. sort of relevant and the minute you start yeah. doing that there's that pressure there which you don't get with a, with Necromunda because we don't fucking know what we're doing I mean lots of other people no, obviously no, do no, and no, probably no. sit there going what are these clowns playing out they're fucking useless but I think also there's a huge there's a huge scene there of people who don't want to see it played for um, it's most powerful you know what's the iterations or whatever they don't, they don't want to see I can't remember what the word is but Power, powerful builds they want to see more narrative style which kind of I'm not sure we're that great at being narrative but at least we can have fun a bit more easily yeah see you Jacob um, see you Jacob and, and you can tie you can tie the games together a bit more because you've got this person oh they were taken out by so and so in that other game and there's a bit of a grudge there and you know it just makes the games a bit more real I guess yeah. I don't know yeah. maybe not real maybe not the right word but something like that um 
uh, into the glory hole. I'm guessing Matt said he reckons small model count games should be on a four by four or smaller board. I would say three by three, possibly. Mm. I think even four by four starts to get a bit big. There's definitely a gap for narrative on YouTube into the glory hole things. I, I might think so. <laughs> Going to miss you all tonight. America reason such. Well, good luck, Weathersburg. I assume you're in America rather than well, maybe you're just watching the coverage somewhere maybe else. Just but, watching uh, yeah, pictures, I'm, yeah. I'm hoping that not to be so depressed in the morning as I was four years ago, but we'll see. <laughs> don't want to talk about it. I just I don't see any good coming from tonight at all. <laughs> don't see it. Crisis Protocols 4x4 says Matt. So, okay, maybe. I mean, I've never played Crisis Protocol, so I don't know. But yeah, maybe that's okay. Right. Good luck, he's a Marylander. Good luck. I don't know if that means that's you're fun. which way you, you lean or vote, but it doesn't matter. Just whatever. <laughs> Just don't don't die when the whole country explodes. <laughs> Good positive thoughts coming from Pete there. <laughs> John Grant said... Yeah, I like a 3x3 three three area. I know, yeah. Crisis Protocol, 4x4. Four four. I really want a post Crisis Protocol board, though, but I haven't got the energy to build one. I'd love, a, I'd love to build a town scene. You could, city could, scene. You could buy one of those those mats that have the the roads already printed on it and then just put the, the yeah. houses on it. Mm. I mean, the problem you'd have there is that you'd only have a few different setups. Yeah. But, but yeah, you, you could do something like that, I guess. Yeah, um, I and mean, I'd also equally love a really big uh, multi-leveled Necrom underboard. I haven't got time to build that either. <laughs> yeah, that's these are all the things that that having a smaller warband or a smaller army, smaller model count size makes you dream about having these massively immersive boards. Yeah, um, and that is kind of what would make them be better. I mean, I saw somebody on the Necrom under Facebook group had posted this. It was like a two by two or possibly even one by one section of Necrom underboard and it had like this this green river and this pipe with the ooze coming out and this destroyed building built up the side and it looked fantastic. It looked spectacular. Um but I can imagine after a while it'd get a bit dull to play on because you're gonna know where everything is and all the sort of line of sight issues and stuff like that. Well, maybe maybe if you could keep building them or start using magnets so you can move it around I mean <gasps> possibly nerdy Rob's uh, our patrons his necromond scenery is amazing that is true and that's modular as well so that, that you yeah can and pretty it. inspiring I've been looking at some of his scratch build and I was, and I was saying I'm on Patrick wasn't I that I was looking at our uh, washed up uh, tin of tr black treacle thinking oh I could mm -hmm. <laughs> I could mm -hmm. do something with that and then I realised I used to keep a box of stuff in the garage um, which was basically just a box of rubbish it was there for about three years, and then eventually I threw it all out when I realised I was never going to turn it into anything. I've got tubs and tubs of tubes and bottles and uh, Pringles cans and all that shit sitting in the cupboard. Yeah, still no, I threw all mine out. Of. I threw all mine out. One's Interesting thinking. shape bits of cardboard when you bought an electrical appliance. Yeah, things like or, that. Or the bits of polystyrene that you think, oh, that would make a perfect don't base. Those. Don't get those so much though now, but yeah, those as well. <laughs> yeah, or like, yeah, you don't get quite as much polystyrene, which is a good thing, I guess. But yeah, um, John mentioned that he likes small model count games, and this is another very good point. Uh, small model count games are great because they allow you to vary what you're painting, and that is yes. exactly yeah, that is definitely um, a good point. I remember, last, I think it was last week, someone said, you know, if I want to paint a thousand or something, I'll I'll paint some fucking rice, and that's, that's a very good point. It's kind of a kind of a joke on that whole. If I, rice is great if you want to eat a thousand. Get ready, boys. Yes, it's red rice today. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I I have enjoyed. I had about two or three different models on the go recently. I had the Skaven uh, Blitz Bowl team that I was doing, um, but I had the coins and the activation tokens from the Orc set, and I had another bit that I was just doing at the same time. So I do a little bit of the Skaven one, and I go and do a bit of the Orc one. And it's probably not the most efficient way to paint them. But it's nice to be able to think, oh, I'm just going to do a little bit of yellow on that one. And I'm going to go over and do some red on this one. And then I'm going to do this bit. And it just... Are you about to talk about painting peel out rice now? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I could do one bit blue and a bit yellow. That kind of thing. Um, leagues in Blood Bowl. Oh. In, in Blitz Bowl, uh, John mentions about linking games together. In Blitz Bowl, they, in Season 2, they do have like a bit of a, a very mild tournament setting. Uh, okay. that you, that you can get some improvements for a team that then they, they can go over. 
under nines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they're they're not like improvements on the individual models. You haven't got to track anything like that. I think it's like an ability that you get as a coach that you can use once per match or something like that. Uh, okay. So oh, it's not too yeah. bad. We need to get hold of those rules somehow. Um, Laura says, and this is brilliant too. She's winning winning the comments of the night award tonight. Um, her GCSE technology project was building Necromunda terrain. How cool is that? <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> See, that's, that's what you need to do. You just need to become a teacher and then set that as like a class activity. Today, class, we're going to assemble. <laughs> I like it. Assemble and paint all this necromunda okay. terrain. But this is English. Never mind. Don't worry. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Well, the instructions are in English, aren't they? They haven't got any words. It's just numbers <laughs> and arrows. I mean, you could apply it to so many things. Uh, VJ we're point today, out. we're going to learn about a uh, hive city. <laughs> Is this real, sir? Oh, yes, they definitely exist. Um, yes, the, uh, the PDF you sent. Me. Morph, he did Morph mention. Me. Morpher sent that. me season two's PDF that's been around for a while, so I've been having a look at that one. Um, yeah. I think what we'll probably end up doing with with Blitz Bowl season two is just because there's some YouTube videos people have downloaded that have the cards on. They just put them full up on the on the video, so I'm just going to print them out for the teams we want to play with for now. Seeing as it's so impossible to get hold of a copy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's very. <laughs> Jason had a colleague who did just that. Brilliant. Awesome. I mean, maybe that's my son has had to build a castle for his history project. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe the winners get taken home and never seen again, and they're just basically used as, as scenery for the uh, war game playing. Um, I think you meant um, the winners are the children for a minute there. <laughs> like, what's going on here? What's <laughs> going with this car? I mean, um, and all just get taken home and <laughs> of all the teachers in school, I reckon history teachers are the most likely to be the ones into war games. Possibly IT. But yeah, what do you reckon? Mm. <laughs> have a straw poll, we've got loads of teachers in here. What, what subjects do you teach teach your people? I think I've mentioned this before, my <laughs> eldest wants to become a history teacher. Uh, and I, I relayed the information to him that somebody gave us on the Discord the other week, which was if you want advice about becoming a teacher, here it is. Don't <laughs> <laughs> he didn't really take very kindly to that. Red <laughs> Sven was D and T teacher. Design and tech. English. English. Uh, what was John? Oh yeah, we John, know what was English teacher. He's 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 teaching us all how not to use could of. <laughs> it might have been Jason as well who said the teaching is a mugs game before. So. Uh, okay. But you know, without you lot. Our kids would be even fucking dumber than they are now, so we thank you for that at least. Uh, yeah, and I'd have killed them because they'd yeah. be at home. That's true, yeah. <laughs> Without having people like you to send them to, frankly, we're not sending you so much to be educated, we're sending them just so we don't kill them. <laughs> and no, I, I appreciate, Jason, you're trying to help. I, I appreciate that very, very definitely. <laughs> so we've had loads of small, small um, games suggested. Uh, Fancy Brawl suggested more than once. Um, yeah. A few others as well. I kind of... I, and I, I'm willing to give any of these kind of games a try. I mean, we've, we've definitely... The, the good thing with some of them like Fancy Brawl and Battletech is it feels like there's less... Mon and this is another plus to these kind of things is there's less monetary investment in them if you want to play AOS. Or especially if you... Way back when, when you wanted to play um, Warhammer Fancy Battle... It's like, oh, you want to play, do you? Okay, just for 150 quid, you can get all this stuff that you're going to have to spend five months putting together. <laughs> Whereas now, it's like, oh, you want to play Warcry? Well, here's a box for 90 quid or whatever, and there's 12 models. Put them together and you're ready. That kind of thing. Yeah, the way you describe that, it just sounds worse. <laughs> like it used, to be, it used to be you spent so much money you got loads of stuff and now you can spend loads of money and not get very much that's true. but I do know what I do know what you mean because and that's the thing but that's the thing with a lot of GW type games and all these war games because they're obviously out to make money they're all you buy this box but then you need even Warcry and, and Underworld you need you buy this box which is X pounds but then you need to keep if you you know to, to get the most out of the game you need to keep buying um, which is you know, inevitable really, because these companies want to make money. But it is it is something you do need to consider um, if you want to, if you depending on what you want to get into. But I mean, all these games, whether it be Crisis Protocol or 
Blitzball, Blitzball less so, but um, Warcry mm. or any of them, they all require, they all keep bringing out new stuff, which is cool that you want to buy. But that is how GW got to where they are and have increased their, their sales and their, their stock prices for the last decade, year on year. So, mm. But then if they didn't do that, then they'd collapse and die. So I guess we, we kind of have yeah. to accept the fact that they're going to. I do suppose that. there are there are rule sets like Frostgrave, which don't require you to to keep buying, and they don't require you to buy a particular type, which I do quite like. So you can pick and choose, and that's probably the the, the draw of that um, Myth and Goal game as well. You can pick from your existing model collection, which I think is a nice a nice side adjunct to, to the games because you can just use what you've already got. And if the rule set's good, then I guess then you keep playing it. Yeah, that's, I guess that's, that's, how, that's I guess how that's Frostgrave. It's got popular. You could play with whatever you wanted, and the rule set was good, and so people kept kept, kept on playing. And and the, as was mentioned before by I think Laura was that those kind of games they rely on the rules to be good because obviously if the rules aren't good, mm. you've you've invested nothing in it, so you can just drop it easily. No, um, I mean I'm not sorry. So I was just going to say so. So therefore, if they make the rules good and tight and exciting then you're more liable when they bring out uh, teams or warbands where to go, actually, I'm going to buy that because I really like this and I'd like to have the models to go with it rather than using my own. Um, because whilst the GW models are fantastic, um, it always feels when you're proxying is a little bit a little bit rubbish sometimes, to yeah. me anyway. And, and I'd rather have the proper models for those things. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I forgot what I was going to say now when I was going to interrupt you. Okay. <laughs> Integral says uh, he he loves playing Frostgrave. You get to be a wizard, but you're crap at casting spells. Sure, makes an interesting point. He says, "What do we think of can- campaign style of games in this context?" He loves how stories develop, which ends up in affecting the models' terrain and the law. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I I do like that aspect of the games. Mm. Uh, Frostgrave is interesting from that respect, and and Necromunda is. It's really quite quite one of the more fun aspects of it is when somebody dies. Is at the end when we get to roll on the table. Or yeah, they get taken uh, out of action, and you have um, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's really fun. Of course, you, you, it can get a bit troublesome if your champion who has your heavy weapon then ends up getting a minus one to his ballistic skill or something like that, and you're like, shit, okay, now I've got this suboptimal fighter um, who's got my main range weapon. I guess you probably could swap the weapons around on the models, but that feels like cheating to me. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, know, I don't know. We haven't asked really happened to us yet, has it? Or has it happened to you? Maybe it's happened, happened to, to you. me now, yeah. Okay. Oh, just... You can swap them around. But can, you get, like, doctors, can you get doctors to fix things? I don't know. I don't know if you can do that, Necromunda. I think no, well, if you've got like a minus to your stat, that's it. You're, you're done. But at the same time, suboptimal is kind of where we where we thrive, you know. So masters of, mastery of suboptimal decision making. Relation to failure. <laughs> So so maybe that's fun. what we should start. We should start a, a, a range of condiments. <laughs> Relish the failure. <laughs> Brilliant. I mean, you can hire a doctor. So, I mean, we're so early in the campaign that they might be dead yeah. soon. So I don't know if it's worth worrying at all. <laughs> all the while, they're not actually dead. I think it's better to keep them as they are and just get more bodies involved. But yeah, see how it goes after all. Yeah. PNR. Who's PNR? Possibly oh, possibly Nerdy, Nerdy Rob. Rob. Yes. It's possibly, poss- possibly, it's possibly Nerdy on, Rob on tonight, or is he You're not here? Um, do also need to quickly say we've um, it might be worth doing in about five minutes. Uh, we need to announce our Patreon winner for tonight for our monthly Patreon competition. Yes, because every patron now uh, can enter a competition every month. Uh, so every month of October we run a competition. And uh, November we're going to run another competition, and if you're our patron, you get in, and you don't get entered automatically, but you can uh, if you have an entry because it's a judge. Each one has to be judged. Yeah. Uh, to by get around us. patron rules. Uh, Gambling rules. Not quite, right? not quite how I put it. To comply <laughs> with the patron rules, it has to be a competition rather than a ballot. Um, mm. And um, and so we. Um, uh, we'll be running one in November, so if you do want to jump in, it's you know we, the prize this this time was twenty five pounds worth of Games Workshop vouchers. Yep. Um, and I think the next one, Pete, do you want to announce what it is now? The next prize next for one's November is going to be Diachasm. Yeah, whoever wins the Patreon 
uh, competition for November we will receive a copy of Diachasm when it arrives hopefully we can time it just right so that you can win it uh, and we can pre-order it so you get it when it arrives yes so um, we will be we'll announce that winner very soon uh, and then the new competition will be up this month which will be the winner from the previous competition as it was give us an idea for a competition we got loads of suggestions which were all fantastic um, we yeah. had to pick a winner so we did because uh, that's how it works uh, but we're definitely going to be using multiple other suggestions uh, for later competitions because we are lazy Blackjack Legacy has been silent, silently listening did we say anything rude about him? I don't think so I said he was a top bloke <laughs> and I'm I dead amazing. and last week we were saying that we were dead jealous of his setup so hopefully he saw that yeah um, <laughs> I don't know whether we yeah. can rip off his idea Pete, about keep, the lighting. Keep, Pete keeps hassling me about getting overhead lighting lights. in the garage. I'm going to just sod off, Pete. Leave me alone. Look at the lights. <laughs> Look at the lights. Uh, whilst you're on Blackjack, I want to ask you, with those lights, are they just the standard boxes that you've just somehow managed to hang from the ceiling, or are they special ones? Because they look like the, the light boxes we've got. As, and I was just wondering, they just hung from the ceiling. That, why didn't I ever think of that? That's, that's a brilliant idea. But yes, very jealous of yourself. It looks fantastic. And yeah, that has prompted yeah. Jason and has reminded me as well that there's Armada as well, which is another small model account game which looks quite cool and has minimal amounts of scenery involved. You see, it doesn't interest me. It's not. funny, isn't it? What what different people with different things, isn't it? I guess different horses for different courses or whatever. I just it doesn't it leaves me cold. I'm not sure why, but it just does. <laughs> I mean, it's not quite the same. I mean, I don't know enough about it, so maybe that's the problem. It it doesn't grab me quite the same as the GW version did. I can't remember what Manor War. I loved the okay. idea of Manor War when that when I was a kid and that came out. But boats, boats, um, maybe that's it. I don't like boats. Are going to be my unpopular opinion. I think sailing and boats are crap. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. Although a lot of the GW ones, they were they were about as far removed as boats as they could possibly be, which was part of the fun of it. You'd have floating castles and God knows what else going on as well. But yeah. Um... Sorry. Yeah. It's just like people would say, do you want to go on a barge holiday? No, fuck off. I don't. <laughs> to be fair, I would hate that idea. A friend of ours <laughs> went crew went on a cruise to need to America because they went around America. And he didn't want to fly, so he took like a week-long boat cruise to get there. I was like, fuck that. <laughs> like Ten hours on a plane or a week on a fucking it's boat. It's probably a little bit bigger than a barge, but even so. Anyway, we yeah. digress. Uh, Andrew says Star Wars Armada is great. I would actually love to play that, but I've already given um, Fantasy Flight Games enough money to send all of my children to university, so I probably don't need to get into that as well. <laughs> um. But Jack Legacy says he needs we need to sort that chat soon. Uh, need to have some human conversation. Yes, we will definitely we'll be in touch after this. We'll chuck you an email, mate, and we'll we'll get to yeah, what we can sort out on that be one. Fun. Be fun. That would be great. And um, I, I don't think I've even seen Star Wars Armada. What's that? Star Wars Armada. It's you know it's like, so it's X Wing is one scale. Armada is like the next scale up. So it's got like. The, the X-Wings are tiny and it's got Star Destroyers are sort of the same sort of size as the X-Wings are in X-Wing and then you've got the, the even bigger ships and I think you even get a Death Star don't you in Armada um, yeah so yeah it looks quite cool but I just it's it, there's too many games I I find that Star Wars because I'm I mean I've said this before I'm not a massive Star Wars fan so those kind of games don't really excite me that much. Having said that, when we played, um, what was the Star Wars like 40k version? Legion. Legion. When we played that, that had that. That was probably one of the first games I played apart from Underworlds, which had that kind of we go system. Yeah. And I is that we go or I go you go? I can never remember which oh, one's which. Remember. You're, well, I, I, yeah, never I know you're right. But you had that that whole thing where you put the tokens out. So it's a bit like. Um, um, that 40k airplane one, um, Aeronautica, that kind yeah. of you know, you put the tokens down and then you alternate activating your units based on knowing what you've given them to do as commands. And I really love that, um, that approach to the games because one of the things that leaves me cold in 40k and OS is like you roll off to go first, oh, you're going first, I guess I'll go make a cup of tea then, uh, whilst you move everything and then you yeah. shoot all of my models to pieces. 
and the only interaction <laughs> you have about that. Left. Yeah, and, and the only the only sort of interaction you've got a you double get. turn when you're playing OS. Oh, you've got a double turn. Well, yeah. I might as well go and make another cup of tea. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and the only interaction you have uh, in 40k, especially in the first round, is like rolling for saves. Oh no, there's some yeah. more dead. Uh, oh look, there's some more dead. Oh, there's Red some more. Red and I was just about to point this out as well. There are skirmish rules for Legion, but I, we get yeah, It's one of those things. It's it's on the list, but hasn't made it to the top of the list. Or even the middle of the list. <laughs> I'd love, I'd love to play it. I'd love to play it, but I'm, I'm, very, I'm painting some clan Wren out there. I've nearly finished them. Though. I keep my children not one on the floor today. Very upset me. Absolutely, very much broke the flying base. Um, but um, yeah, but they're 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 nearly finished. But I've I've never played the game. Well, from that one game, I've played. I've never played the game. Um, I definitely prefer. It's interesting. Sorry, go on. Go on. No, not you. I oh, yeah, sort of change the subject ever so slightly because Dead Hands says I'll be counting dungeon crawlers as low mini count, and Jason said he thought they were they were a different beast. Though I probably would count them as low mini as low mini count. I'm, I'm really looking at games that are quick to set up and quick to play. So um, if they have miniatures, that will probably count for me. But again, it's different. People like different things. I'm quite into dungeon crawlers at the moment, or at least the idea of them. I haven't played very many, but I, I'm, I'm I'm thinking they they'd be a good option for me because I don't get to role play very often now. So that would be the, the, the closest thing that I get. Yeah, I think I prefer dungeon crawlers in that kind of setting. I find dungeon crawlers in a general roleplay setting quite dull, or I found them much more dull. And I think it's because I find them quite hard to believe in anymore. And, and I know it's all fancy, and you've got to you know suspend your disbelief and and you know imagine that. But it's just like the the ridiculousness of going into a dungeon where supposedly things live. And then you're like, oh, this corridor has a trap halfway down. That doesn't seem very practical to me. <laughs> Just imagine the necromancer walking along in the morning reading his newspaper with a coffee in his hand and suddenly something cuts him in half. He's like, oh, for fuck's sake, I forgot about that trigger trap. Or something like that. It's like, who puts this yeah, shit there here? Is, there is that. Laura says Gloomhaven is amazing. Yeah, I can't ever imagine. It's not quick by any standards, quick to set up or quick to play. I can never imagine playing Gloomhaven it seems to me I just might as well have a role playing yeah, there is the digital version so I've played the digital version I really enjoyed it get, fortunately I've, that's fallen by the wayside digital play for me is fallen by the wayside at the moment um, but um, I um, would I thought the idea behind the way the mechanics work was really interesting but the thought of trying to do that mechanically rather than digitally just left me cold <laughs> Um, and, and it is important with with the comment about the dungeon crawlers and and these kind of games that that blackjack pointed out uh, earlier that that the line between board and mini gaming is blurring so all these things are yeah. starting to really blur into one and uh, at the minute you've got things like yeah you've got necromunda and you've got underworlds and they are very different games but they are starting to become more and more alike and, uh, and those Lines are definitely getting a lot more blurred as we go along, as we progress. Yes, which is a good thing. I think. And not just because we're getting older and can't see as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for the time when we sit down and start playing game under us and get about halfway through before we realise that we've got different models. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, wait a minute! That's an Orlock Ganger. That's that's <laughs> that's not the warband I'm playing at all. I don't know what's going on. Jason's not so keen on Gloomhaven. Uh, yeah. I've I've not played Gloomhaven. It looked like one of those games to me where you need to remember a lot of stuff, even when it's digital. You need to remember how certain things affect you, or how you have to use certain things to to actually get the not the best out of it, but to not just get wiped out all the time. Yeah. Um, Red Fen says to be honest, a lot of RPGs seem to play out like dungeon crawlers. I think that might depend a little bit on the DM and the party involved. Um, yeah, I mean, Red Sven sort of says it's the, he's le that's the bit he's least keen on D&D. &D. I would say it's the bit I'm least keen on in D&D &D as well, although I like a mixture, but I just it, it's, it's the closest that I'll get at the moment. Um, although I did notice that uh, Wolfrup um, have, have moved on to Roll20, I think. I think that was what they said. And that kind of took me back. I just don't seem to have the time to do all these things I'd love to do. And things like um, another definition of uh, small or low model count games uh, is that generally you play them with two people. And a lot of these games are two people play, uh, two player games. But things like role playing, you generally need four 
or five people. Yeah. And as you get older, trying to get four or five people in the same space is impossible. Seems to be. Yeah. Like some of you got children. I mean, we had seven, <laughs> seven in our group, didn't we? And only two yeah. of us had kids, but that was still enough to make it nearly impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then one of them got a girlfriend, and then we were <laughs> totally screwed. We were busy <laughs> all the time. It's disgraceful. I mean, at least we had the good, the goddamn good grace to, you know, be in we, marriages we were married, where we're never screwed. Exactly. <laughs> at least we were good enough to, you know, to be married, so that we, you know, there was no expectation that we were going to do stuff together on the weekends. It was just how do I get away from the kids? <laughs> Moonstone scales two to four. What's Moonstone? Another game that we haven't mentioned was God Tier uh-huh. as well. We we completely missed God-tier. that. Yeah, that was another one where I was there's like, just, there's just so many. There's just so many. Pete, shall we do the draw for yes. the Patreon and then we can wrap up? Yes, we can. But it's not a draw. It's us picking and announcing. We Sorry, can... yes. The announcement. The announcement. Yes. You're right. I'm doing it now. The announcement. So we had some fantastic suggestions um, ranging from from animations to stories to impressions. And we, we wanted to pick something, I think it's fair to say, we want to pick something that was achievable for everybody, regardless of your level of ability and your resource so that anybody would be able to take part in the next one and have an equal footing just going to stop you there because laura's off really nice to have you on laura thanks laura thanks for your comments they've been great brilliant hope to see you next time as well um so yes so the winner we picked primarily because we wanted to pick somebody who we felt would be really good in that situation uh not really good but uh, would be very achievable for everyone still entertaining funny um, but also something that anybody could could do, and we have decided that we have picked the winner, whose suggestion was. Uh, and now, correct me if I'm wrong, Robin, but it was pick a a card from Underworlds, and replace the flavour text with um, like either a quote that we might say or have said or something that we would have used to describe it. That kind of thing. Yeah, you can't you, pick Robin, Robin and Pete speak for the flavor text. You basically, can. you can't pick one of the Grimwatch cards and just leave it as it is because that's just generally how we sound. Um, and the winner of that one, the suggestion of that one was Sfinung. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. So, we will get in touch with you after this show, and we will um, sort out your winnings. Mm-hmm. So, congratulations! And yeah, congratulations, I think... well done. But there, all the entries were great. They were, they were uh, fantastic. And we will be stealing those later uh, for no reward, I'm afraid, guys. Yeah. Uh, but um, the, well done to the winner. And we only had about 20 or so entries. So anybody who's not a Patreon yet on Patreon, yeah. patron, a patron, patron, whatever you want to say, anybody who isn't and wants to be in with a chance of winning Diachasm, we will be running that this month, starting now. And the competition is, as we just said, Pick a card, come up with some Robin and Pete flavour text for that card. Uh, if yep. you can knock it together, uh, if you want to do a, a Matt special and come up with a, an edited card and all that and change the picture with something funny or whatever, that is that is fine. But if not, just the card and the new text will be enough and we can hopefully uh, put together a short list of winners for uh, next month and we can show them off before we announce the new winner. Be fun. Yep. And the winner yep. will get a copy of Diachasm. We we've we're being smarter now with our rewards. We're not going to buy it, then try and get it to wherever it needs to go. We're going to make sure that if we... your local currency, whether it be euros, dollars, yeah. or shekels. <laughs> yes. So we're going to try and yeah, because we've had them all. Uh, so we're going to try and make sure that we're a bit more cleverer about it, and we'll make sure that we get it sent to you wherever you're at from wherever you're at. So it's it's easier to get it to you instead of spending about fifty quid on postage costs yeah and you can enter if you do if you do join us on patreon you can enjoy at any level you can join at the two dollar level and still have a chance of of winning exactly uh, that you know if you're if you think you're particularly creative then it's a shoe in isn't it that's two dollars for a month uh, and you can uh, win a copy of diachasm exactly uh, and uh, like say it doesn't have to be all the card or all, all sort of made to look no. funky and stuff you can just come up with that it's one entry per person you can't flood the, the challenge with hundreds to increase the chance even more but to be fair you know it's only um you know there's only maybe 20 or 30 people into the anyway. it's so the glory good good very good sorry Pete. you said two dollars or two pounds it's two pounds pounds yes two pounds, pounds. Two pounds. yeah uh, so there you go 
hopefully everybody will want to jump online and get involved with that there is also the each patreon round. there is also the Sorry. patreon warhammer <laughs> underworlds uh tournament that we're, we're doing each roughly every month yeah. and all the chat and you get outtakes i mean they're the best outtakes. bit to be honest okay. they're worth two pound a month <laughs> the outtakes i just watch them sometimes when i'm feeling a bit blue and when i just feeling, when i'm feeling down mrs brown <laughs> yeah exactly i just watch yeah. some of those just absolutely ridiculous yeah definitely tending much to, more towards the singing these days a lot more singing outtakes <laughs> we're meant to be encouraging them to join <laughs> oh yeah that's a good point sorry i need to go i think that someone's on the phone for me so i'm gonna be back in a minute but robin continue with what? the low model no! count ah! continue robin ah! keep talking talk set up who's on the phone who's called pete to set me up and he's just like well we've got well, we've pretty much finished what we were talking about and uh, now i've got to think of something to say so who thinks i we should play journeys in middle earth and who thinks we should play crisis protocol they're my two games that i'm kind of thinking about playing and i don't know what do i have for tea Okay, you can ask me questions, that's fine. That's, that's much better than me just making stuff up as I go along. What did I have to tell you? It wasn't very exciting today. We had carbonara today. Um, I had between appointments, I had to run run back and forth. Uh, I quick, can cook carbonara in the middle. Uh, so that was what we had. That's why I have to tea. With bacon, I'm afraid, Matt. Crisis Protocol, they're releasing 90s X-Men. Yes, that, Pete, that's what switched Pete on to Crisis Protocol because uh, he's got a bit of a thing for Wolverine. Uh, both are really good, Red Sven. Are there any games you don't play, Red Sven? <laughs> Jason isn't particularly interested in either. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I was, we're just going to cl click back into the dungeon corner. This Bard Sun game really is interesting me even more this week because they announced that Rihanna Pratchett and Ian Livingstone are writing some content for it. Oh, yes. Uh, which um, has really, fulf really filled me with excitement for, for it. Um, yes, because I, I, you shared the thing and I opened up the, the, the Facebook post and I saw that it had um, Pratchett on there. And I was like, oh, I'm already excited. And then I started to read into it and it said, and in Livingston, I was like, I'm sold. I don't, I don't what is it? <laughs> when when can I buy this, frankly? So, right, I've got some questions there. Ooh. Sorry. Uh, John Grass says, what is Journeys? It's a, effectively, a, it's not quite a dungeon crawl, it's in the wilderness. Although I think there is one in Moria now, isn't there? And it's a app-enabled... Uh, adventure quest game for set in middle earth made by fantasy flight games um and it, it's pretty cool it's pretty neat it comes with minis and um, doesn't it have like a map as app. well yeah but, yeah you've driven by you get a map tiles but the app tells you what order to put them in and tells you when the encounters come in mm. you have to do everything it's quite it's quite good it's quite good did we know uh, that ian livingston is a director at steamforged did not ah i didn't know that ah that explains a little bit that one yeah, that, that that does explain that. Ah, okay. Uh, so it's good having it's good having people who know what they're talking about on the show. Um, it's the I was asking about which team do we think we do for Crisis Protocol? I mean, do you have are they teams? Are they a bit like war bands, or do you just pick different people? I I haven't de 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 dived enough into it um, uh, um, to know, but I think there's like spider. There's just like a spider team, and I guess there's an X Men team and a. Um, I can't remember what the other ones are. I get confused with Marvel Champions. Um, but, um, <laughs> There's an Iron Man team, and uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Um... Uh, VJ says that he's not interested in Christ Protocol. Every bat rep he's watched is exciting. It's watching paint dry. We've not watched us play it yet. No, that's true. You can that's actually true. watch paint stay damp for hours instead. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, I mean, it has to be said, VJ. If we do, if we, maybe we ought to try playing a game before I paint on the minis, because um, if it is boring, we probably won't play it. Yes, yeah, good point. <laughs> and if we did want to play that, we would definitely have to get more scenery. Um, yeah. We, you know, and there was another random comment from Jeff, who says he likes carbonara, but it almost cost him his wife. Where's that comment gone? <laughs> I saw that. I assumed that yeah. some random conversation occurred whilst I was not at my desk. Well, car yeah, I did. Matt asked what we had for dinner. Carbonara is the greatest. Okay. It also cost me my wife. I think you might have to explain that in a little bit more detail. I guess what does Steamforged do again? Steamforged, VJ, were, they did Dead, Dead Souls, Dark Souls. Dark Souls. Do they do God Tier? Uh, uh, they, they do do God Tier, do do, and they were Guild Ball, weren't they? Yeah. Which is now finishing up. They've got about a dozen dozen games. I was having a quick look on their website, and they do have about a dozen games on there. Um, <laughs> got in his beard, bad choice. Okay, see that, I guess. Oh, I see. I see. Ah, okay. Um, so I, I'm definitely interested in getting into some more 
non GW games. Uh, only because I'd like to see how other people's um, mechanics uh, come about, and and someone mentioned that they were interested to see the bard song, bard sung mechanics, bard song mechanics, and yeah. uh, they they sung. previewed. It is sung, isn't it? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Bard sung mechanics, and they did preview a picture on their Facebook page, and it's got like the different stats, and you can you can customize your character stats on there, which interests me as well. Um, definitely, that's piqued my interest as to the fact that it could yeah, be... I'm definitely interested. I have a I have, I'm worried that it'll be too complicated for me. I like it to be very streamlined, but without it's very hard to glean from reading the descriptions how how complex they are in reality because mm. everything mm. looks very customizable. And, and, and customizable is great, but if you end up with too much granulation, for me, it gets too too complicated. Yeah, it's getting that, that balance uh, where you don't want a full blown RPG and you don't want a, a 40k game or something. You want something that's uh, sort of necromunderish. It's like there's there's a lot of customization there, but it doesn't a lot of it doesn't matter too much to have a good game. No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, Resident Evil is another game. Uh, I'm not so sure about Resident Evil. I mean, I love zombies. I'm, I'm a big fan of zombies. And there was the Walking Dead game, which I quite liked. But again, that had the problem. A couple of people that... shouted that out at the beginning, actually. That was good. Well, um, obviously, Jason just said the Resident Evil game, mm, board game is good. But I've not played it. I, I, yeah, like I say, I'm a big fan of it. And I did like the look of the, the Walking Dead game that, when that came out. But again, it comes down to scale and terrain for those kind of games. You know, having... I, I guess if we had a... No, the scale would be wrong. I was going to say, if we had a bunch of scenery for Crisis Protocol, then we wouldn't have to worry about... Um, we'd have all the train there for, for that, but they're different scales for Resident Evil so or, or Walking Dead, so that wouldn't work. Oh, they, I, I don't know what scale they... Are they I know, I know more 28 my, mil. It's a bit bigger, isn't it? Sorry? Uh, I know that... Um, Crisis, Crisis Protocol. Protocol is a little bit bigger. Yeah, I think they're like more around sort of two inch mini sized or something like that. I think Street Zombie Fighter game. Right that sounds just... awesome. <laughs> I think GW have been they've ruled the roost for a lot of years with with their main tabletop games, with their low model count games, with all their specialist little games and stuff like that. Um, I mean, back in the eighties and the nineties, there were a lot of small fish, but over time, GW have coalesced into this massive beast yeah. in the industry. I think it'd be really nice to see what else is out there now. Hot cars model scale, whatever that is. That mean like Hot Wheels size. Sorry. It's went to glory. And I remembered what I was going to say earlier, and I forgot. Go, go for it. It's, it's, it's um, Matt saying hot, hot cars. It's reminded me about Gaslands, which I haven't played, but that's a whole oh, yes. set of model cars, isn't it? Wasn't but that? I was going to say, Osprey do loads of rule books. Oh, they do publish Frostgrave. And Frostgrave has come, become famous, but I'm guessing because it's good. And then the other ones, Gaslands, has a, a, a decent following. But I'm guessing the other ones just kind of fall by the wayside because they, at the end of the day, not that good. Uh, but you've got that advantage. With they could just print a book. Hmm. And chuck that out there because I think then they publish Ash's zombie based. Yes, um, I think they did. So, uh, so I'm guessing the good the good games stick and they get a following and then the following yeah. grows. Yeah, I guess, uh, I guess so that's a, that's the key, isn't it? That's the advantage of having a non non miniature tied in rule set, I suppose. Hmm. Ooh, Blackjack says that Walking Dead's played on a two by two board, so you can get away with less scenery. That's Ooh. interesting to know. Hot this resorts. is the problem, and I don't know, Andy, if you get this problem, but the minute you want to try a game, you, you know that you can't just um, you can't just whack together any old crap to play a game, for the channel at least. You've got to have a good finish on stuff. You've got to have proper terrain. It can't just be cardboard boxes and Pringles cans. Uh, and yeah. That immediately sort of stops us quite a bit playing a lot of things, because it's just... Uh, we, we just haven't got time to paint the models as they are, let alone painting a load of scenery as well. No, and the other problem is, uh, is, is you've got to at least play once, probably twice, before you can really play it on the channel because you, you you will get all the rules wrong if you haven't played it right again. So um, it's um, that's tough. It's yeah. tough to keep, to keep. You can't keep chopping and changing games that easily. Maybe, especially with 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 it not being our day job. I guess <laughs> I guess you can a bit more when it's like Underworlds or. Um... 
yeah or, or brought fancy brawls things like because they're board games you only have to yeah. paint the, the pieces or god tier i guess you only have to paint the main pieces for that but if yeah. you want to um if you want to actually play anything else you need to then start working on that terrain and that can be a real a real sticking point and having the time to play them um because most of us only have a certain amount of time and f especially for us if we want to play those games they've generally got to be recorded for the channel yeah and blitz i like jason jason's commenting about a game which the models were tiny creatures that fought in people's houses so any old stuff was appropriate terrain that's that'd be a good brilliant idea. that's what the rule set was like but it'd be great i want to i want to write that game that's now, a really even good even idea though it's already been written <laughs> that is a really good idea you could have slippers just any old cut some lego doesn't matter it's there i love that that's a brilliant idea just get yeah, the bin <laughs> um Anonymous Jess says we need to contact terrain makers for partnerships. I like the idea. Don't think they'd ever talk to us though. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll supply terrain, just not paint it. So then you have to find someone else to paint it. And again, yeah. nice idea. No one's going to approach us though. There's a cyber, cyberpunk and rugby game coming. <laughs> Interesting. Do you even need to make rugby cyberpunk? I mean, rugby on its own is pretty mental, <laughs> regardless. Brick Wars, I've heard of Brick Wars, uh, but I don't know. I don't know how it works. So I think I think um, I mean the, one of the main, a couple of the the main obvious plus points to um, low mini count games is obviously they're generally faster to play, and as we discussed earlier, um, generally people, a lot of people don't have a lot of time to play these games they're cash rich and time poor so these kind of games which maybe don't cost a lot less than a foot game of 40k or an army in aos or whatever uh you get a lot less models but you you have the time sufficient to be able to actually use them instead of having yeah. a whole army that just sits on a shelf or in a box and never gets touched yeah um, yes the other, the other you... sorry go on. sorry I was saying, you get, as we talked about already, you get a variety of experience, so you don't have to have yeah. one big arm. Uh, you, it's similar for the channel. We, we play AOS every week, it'd be the same army every week. Yeah. Might get, you might get a new army every couple of years. New, new unit every two yeah. or three months. Yeah, we've, all, we've already got four gangs on the go for Necromunda in, in a comparatively short amount of time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It hasn't taken too much effort. Um, and then when we want to add new fighters in, um, as we increase uh, the gangs or add weapons or whatever, generally that's not going to take too much effort to paint an extra model here and there to add in. And yeah. Blitzbolt as well is like, oh, okay, let's get a new team. That's six models. So that's not going to take too long to paint something up, even in a basic contrast mode like I do. It's still going to look all right. Yeah. Blitzbolt's a good example of where we kind of had the problem with the first game we played a blitz bowl didn't really gel didn't really like it so much and we'd never really thought about playing it again and the only reason we played it again was because uh we sort of said let's play something different and you wanted to we wanted to get another a duo, duo game of marvel on the channel and yeah we're like, well we need something else well we've got blitz bowl i'd played a game with uh mr morph recently and it was like let's give it another go and it just the second time around it stuck much more not stunk stuck much more uh so we were then like oh okay actually this is actually quite fun to play once you've had a couple of games of it and that comes back to like you said of you've got to have a couple of games before you can really tell if you enjoy it or not the yeah. judgment minis yeah i was look just looking at um, damien commented again i just i just googled it they're pretty yeah uh, pretty sweet what's it called judgment judgment it's called judgment i just yeah that's quite nice. Sorry. And um, we another plus side of low mini count games is that there there is that that reduced investment. You don't have to worry about oh I've got to spend one hundred and fifty quid before I even get a battle force together that I can play forty k with. You can buy yeah. a copy of Super Fancy Brawl or a copy of Beast Grave or whatever, and you already have everything to play in that box. Yeah, and it's it's not even because I mean you can play, you can play forty uh, k, especially nowadays. They you know they've got smaller 
they've got rules for smaller armies. So you can play with less investment, but the there's almost like an un uh, not an unwritten rule, but it's it, all the time imply if you are playing small, all the time you it feels like you're it's implying the game ought to be bigger. You know what I mean? There's all there's so much stuff it ought to be bigger. Whereas you play in Crisis Protocol or um, Frostgrave, it's as big as it is, and you can get extra figures to change it. But the, the game is as big as it is. If you see yeah. what I mean? There's, it doesn't feel like there is. I don't know, but I mean, I know, I know most of us are completists, so we buy everything anyway. But um, you you. But we don't have to. to. We choose. No, exactly. To... There isn't the pressure there to to, to buy, um, to sort of to keep expanding. Yeah, I think I think that's really uh, what I'm trying to say. And it 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 happens over, um, for us especially, it was good for Underworlds because it happens over a slower scale. So it's not like if we want to play 40k now. There's already a billion armies and choices and and everything out there. Underworlds mm-hmm. when especially when it first came out, it was like. There's the box, and then there was two extra war bands, and then three months later there were two extra war bands. It was a much slower scale of of ramping stuff up that we could actually um, cope with. That we weren't sort of sitting thinking, no, it's too much, can't do it, just give up. Whatever happened to Kill Team? Did it die? I haven't seen much of it around recently. Well, it's still going, but I think they didn't they tease a second edition or a new version at the end of the last. A really, uh, you know, preview thing. So I think Kill Team yeah. will resurge. I mean, I'd love to see a more streamlined Kill Team. I have to say, because I love the idea of it. And and again, small that small model count buy into. Although, what was first? Sorry, I, I interrupted myself. What was frustrating about Kill Team was like, oh yes, you can play this game with a few um, a few models, but actually you couldn't buy it. So you had to go and buy like fifty models and pick the seven that you wanted to use. Mm. Uh, which is a bit frustrating, but they actually did almost like underworld warbands, but for kill to streamline the rules a little bit, I think it would be great. Yeah, they needed to cut down on some of the rules. They needed to make it more a WeGo system, because uh, I know that the the shooting is WeGo in Kill Team, but the movement wasn't, and that just seemed a bit weird to me. It's like, why would you do that? Mm. Uh, and then the other thing that annoyed me was the fact that they went, here's Kill Team, much smaller set of options, much smaller set of choices available. It was a bit like Necromunda to start with. There were a, a good number, but there weren't masses of choices. And then suddenly, like a couple of months later, it was like, boom, here is everything. And yeah. we immediately just went, no, not doing it. No, yeah. Not doing it. yeah. Wolfman <laughs> kind of like highlights it exactly, um, where he says that Kill Team's great if you've already got an army. And I think that's where it, it definitely came into its own. It was better for people who already had 40k armies who wanted to play small games because they could just take a model from here and a model from that squad and do it yeah. that way. Um, but if you don't have any of that, you're like, oh, okay, I think maybe I'll do a... I, I, I'm trying to think now, like an Imperial Guard kill team. Oh, I've got to buy four different boxes at 20 quid, mm-hmm. 20 quid a pop to get the eight models that I actually need to make a, a kill team up with. Maybe I won't. And yeah, I, that was definitely the GW hope. I think that people would buy these four boxes to get ten models, and then go, "Well, I've got the rest. I might as well paint them." Well, I've got the models. I might as well get the book. I only need a few more models and a tank to make an army, so I'll just do that. And then they could, Maybe. you know, it's like the first hit's free. Yeah. Um, well, Jason suggested the other way around. He thinks it was it was made as a side game for existing forty k players. Well, I think possibly. Yeah. Both. That's, no, both that's what I think. Was. I, I mean, think I, was... I really think it should be. You know, it, it, it should be the perfect gateway. It should be designed to be the perfect gateway for, for the bigger games. I think rather than than relying on people who've got the bigger game to to play it. But what do I know? I don't own a multi million pound uh, miniatures company, so I, I, I don't know about. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was. I think it was made as a side game for forty k. I agree with Jason. Yeah. Uh, um, but I don't think that's what they should... I agree with you. I don't think that's what they should have done. It should have been a case of making something which you buy some models for and go, cool, that was quick and easy and cheap. But now, mm, I, if I buy some more, I can maybe go on to 40k or something like that. I mean, a lot of people probably won't because they'll go, well, cool, I've got this small kill team for 40 quid or 30 quid or whatever. Uh, I'm going to collect multiple different kill teams instead and do it that way. But that's just me. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, they could almost build it fr from from the ground up, as it were. You could almost do it like from an AOS perspective. You could have like an underworld. You've got underworld. You've got your warbands. So, yeah, you know, people who play underworld and they've got their warbands. They could release Warcry rules for them or some similar small skirmish game rules for them. And then you, you now you're playing on a tabletop, taking it out. You know, using the same models, taking it out, making it a bit more AOS. You know, and then you could add these things to it, and you could gradually build it out that way. Will be will be an interesting exercise. I guess they've kind of done it a little bit in that they released Underworlds, and then you've just got models, and you can make them represent things in Warcry. Yeah. Um, but it would be yes, nice to yeah, actually yeah, have yeah. rules for. But there's no actual tie in. I mean, the, what, what the Underworlds models are, the Underworlds models. They don't, I, know, I know you can use them in other games, but they're not. You know, there's no taking some still parts into into Warcry kind of thing. Yeah, you know, yeah, definitely. They break out of Beast Grave into the next zone. I mean, it's, a, it's more of a, it was more of a uh, thought experiment than an actual. They think that they should actually do it, but it would be interesting, interesting to do. Yeah, I, I would definitely think that that would have. It would be much cooler for us to play a game of Underworlds with Scritch versus Severin or whatever, and then be able to play a game of Warcry with the same warbands or something like that as they. As the fight spills out into into the the eight points or whatever it's called, that kind of thing, or the all points. Oh, right? It's certainly just in one of the rule books, Wolfman Gas. It's interesting. May Arrest Bands asked a good question. It might be worth opening it out to everybody. Uh, it says, uh, "Is the well, I mean, how is Underworlds doing? Is it well received? Is a new player with limited amounts of money and he wants to get started? It is. Oh, I think." I think certainly it's probably the best game games we've ever made in a very long time, if not ever. It's a really good game. I'm not sure with the current pandemic going on, it's the right time to get into it because I think if the pandemic goes on for much longer, the game might peter out because it does, we talked about this last week, it does kind of rely on people being able to get together to play it, which obviously most of the games do. But um, I think the competitive scene kind of drives the game and if that completely collapses... And I'm not sure what will happen, but it is a really good game. So if you have got somebody to play it with locally um, and don't want to be like, I've got to be top of the competitive meta and just get uh, get the starter box and a couple of warbands, then it's a great game. Really enjoyable. There you go. It's all gone quiet. Sorry, I was <laughs> I was just typing a response to something, John. Tyler. Um, um, I agree. I, I do think that... It, the only bad thing about Underworlds right now is the global pandemic, which isn't a bad short list of things. Just the only bad thing in most situations. Yeah, moment. exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, nearly everything. That's that's the only bad downside. Then you're doing great. And I agree. If you take the pandemic away, the game itself is fantastic. Um, yeah. uh, it's it's low cost. It's easy to get into. You can buy um, multiple war bands, and if you approach it from a um, at least initially, if you approach it from a casual angle, you can't go wrong with it, really. Um, especially if no. you just go on with Beast Grave, because that's all that's going to be available soon, is just Beast Grave yeah. cards. Um, I do think yeah. that you, if you then decide to go on from there into a less casual, more competitive view, that's that's entirely up to you. But you can do that. You have that choice. You can go either way with it. And you can go to a tournament still as a casual player. I mean, obviously, you're probably not going to win, but you can still go, I mean, Robin and I have done that. We've gone to tournaments and we are casual players, but we've still had an absolutely amazing fun time. Yeah, and the community is lovely, uh, very supportive, which is really nice. Um, I would probably wait for the, if you haven't bought anything yet, wait for the Diachasm box to come out and start with that. So you, you're starting at the beginning, that's coming out in a month or so's time. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's yeah, there you go. There's hey, also um, Arena Mortis. You could get yeah, that if you want off, something Pete. nice and easy. Sorry, Sorry Pete. I was just going to say, there's Arena Mortis as well, which is a little uh, little side game that you can play, which is a fun little side uh, game to play with friends and stuff like that, but it's definitely not Underworlds. Uh, Mario says that he's been watching our battle reports and stuff, so good to, good to yeah. hear. Um, they've said, as Robin mentioned, they've said December for Diachasm. We don't know exactly when that's going to be yet. Um, no, I think it's got to be near the beginning because it's not going to be the end of December, is it? And, no. it, and I don't think it, I don't think it'll be the week before Christmas. So well, that's already mid December. It's got to so be. I think, I think probably you're looking at first or second weekend of December. I, I would I would hope so. Um, I would really hope so. And 
yeah, and we're going to be giving away a copy to our patrons. If you if you're interested in that, Mario, do check out Patreon, um, so that you have a chance of winning there as well. Plus, we've had some new starters like um, John Grant and Co. Uh, yeah, they they've yeah. joined very recently, and John's only ever played the online version, so you know, uh, definitely very newbie friendly. I would say as well, Mary, you might want to check out Underworlds Online. Maybe that's worth a look at as well. It's it's right, definitely yeah. very different. It's um, quite a different game, <laughs> but but it is a digital version, which is quite nice. Um, and and it does does help you learn the rules. John Grant True. said he's learned a lot from playing that, playing uh, learning oh. the rules on that front, and it is quite cheap at the minute. So it's uh, cheap on Steam. Yeah, and yeah, Mario, if you do start playing, we do have a whole list of how to play Underworlds. Uh, videos which might be a little bit out of date because they're beast grave when we don't know what the new diachasm rules will be but we'll have to, we'll have to do check those out as well check those out as well he's also a 3d sculptor cool awesome <laughs> think about making some sculpts for inspiration damage tokens that'd be cool yeah that'd be pretty cool but if you do make any do let us know what they look like and you know we, we'd love to see them yeah definitely um somebody mentioned back further up about whether underworlds was was done for uh, someone said something about it. Four seasons being a good run for a side side project. I don't know if that was um, Mr. Morph stirring the pot there. I'm just trying to find it now. <laughs> uh, Jason Neal did mention it. GW might do a Netflix. Hey, this is a really good product. We better kill it. That, that would kind of sort of fit with how GW do. Um, uh, Anonymous Jeff says you can be confident that ninety percent of the current season is written at least. Do you mean in Netflix, Anonymous Jeff? I presume you mean Netflix. Um, yes, uh, I I do like. Uh, I do one of the other things I like about small mini uh, mini count games is the ability for customization uh, lends itself much more. Whether that's terrain, like if you've got a board, and we've seen some three D boards and three D. Uh, terrain that people have made for the boards and stuff like that or whether it's actually 3d modeling the models themselves or that kind of thing there's 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 not more scope for it but i think it's it's easier to achieve when you've only got 10 models you need to worry about yeah yeah jeff made diachasm i think he just made they, they're releasing season four it must be it must be in the can as it oh, I, yeah i would say i mean i think yeah. jeff said it was 90 percent done i reckon it's all done i reckon they've finished season four diachasm yes yeah done and they're working on season if there is a season five i think they're probably working on it now i hope, I hope there is i hope there is because it's a good game yeah i mean i have many fond memories of, of uh, playing at the grand clashes with no hope of ever winning anything but just going along to those and meeting people was great fun yeah yeah uh, Mario, was... working with an independent board game developer exciting stuff fun <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, Arms just says barring power unbound style releases, maybe. I don't know. I reckon they've probably even done those already because they work at like 18 months ahead, don't they? Yeah. And I don't think they don't, there's no suggestion that they actually may be any thought to what's gone before. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? It's not like you don't feel like they've ever used to cover up any shortcomings. Yeah. Um, and if anything, they've been used to pile on. To, so, to just so double right. down on the on the things that are yeah. terrible yeah. about the game at that point they've just gone you know what <laughs> fuck it more of that <laughs> oh no we're going to ban it all now because you know no, that's not actually fun thanks thanks very much for that just like the power unbound deck look at all these awesome cards you can't use them <laughs> um, so I, I reckon all of season 4 is finished at the printers being packaged up um Certainly, the models will definitely already all be finished. So there might be a potential for cards maybe still in the works. But I think, um, considering a lot of the all the season, the main season cards definitely have to be finished by now, yeah. um, because obviously they don't release them in in sec. They release cards all over the place. Um, so I think that must all already be in the can. Maybe there's a a gift pack that they haven't done yet or something perhaps that they'll knock up in five minutes and then package up to spew at us but i think it's all done i'm more intrigued by what they might be doing in season five yeah or if there's a season Which, five I mean, new realm anyway that's another that's another that's a discussion for another night it's 10 past 11 Oof. and uh, i think probably time to draw this wonderful chat to a close thank you everybody for listening as usual yes um, 
always a highlight of the week for us. Thanks to everybody who's come along, who's come and gone again, uh, catching this up the next day or anything like that. Yeah. Thank you for joining us earlier or being with us throughout the whole thing. Thanks to Andy from uh, Blackjack for coming along as well and joining in the chat. It's always nice to see fellow YouTubers coming along and chatting. Yep. Yeah, always good. Yes, yeah. nice to see you, Andy. And nice to see some new faces as well, Mario. And yep. uh, if you come back and watch the best, Laura, thanks for tuning in. Um, lovely to have uh, patrons who don't often get to come in and join in. It's really good. Yep. And, uh, and congratulations to Sviling, who won our yes. <coughs> previous Ooh. month's Patreon um, giveaway. And yep. Yeah, the new one will be open tomorrow. You can join in too. <laughs> Just sign up to Patreon. Exactly. This advert is sponsored by Agents of Sigma. Ding! <laughs> So thank you, everyone. Do stay safe in this new lockdown world again. And I hope everybody yes. stays. Yeah, we're in the UK. Good luck. And everybody, everybody everywhere. In the US we, as well uh, right now. Good luck. Spiking all over the place. So yeah, stay safe, everybody. Yep. And we'll see you next week. I don't know what we're going to talk about. Um, what do we talk yep. about next week? Yeah, we'll have to work that. If you've got any suggestions for what we talk about next week, do let us know if you're over on the Discord. Do give us a shout. And Andy will be in touch as well. Get in touch with you. Yeah. So we'll see you soon in maybe the Beast Grave or maybe the Underhive or maybe in a completely different board game altogether. Possibly by the time we next get to meet, we might be in the Dire Chasm. Ooh. Well, apart from when we meet on Wednesday. But after that. But after that one. <laughs> but the yeah. next, next time. The next, next time, yeah. So we'll see you soon, guys. Bye. Okay. Bye.